come on up. This is, this is my good friend, Ava Taylor. Um, hey. Hi. Hi. She's not only my friend, she's my agent. Now, <laughs> apparently there's, there's some people out there in the universe who have a problem with yoga teachers having agents. So without directly addressing any of these criticisms, some of which have arisen recently, but some of which are pretty old by now. Yes. It's pretty old by now. Um, I thought I would invite Ava in to put something positive out into the universe about who she is and what she's doing, what her intentions are. And uh, I might have something to add to it uh, also. But, um, uh, well, in any case, anyway, I'll, I'll let Ava speak for herself. So here's Ava. <laughs> Hi. It's true. Um, I am <laughs> Leslie's agent. Uh, and um, it's funny because the word agent is really loaded and has a lot of misconceptions. Um, when I founded my, my business two years ago, two and a half years ago. Your business um, is called? Yama Talent. And uh, totally, you know, it, it stands for Yoga Artist Management Agency. And we are making a play on the Yamas and Niyamas and really saying that the work that we're doing, which is sort of bringing this new um, level of, of business acumen into the yoga industry while things are sort of sophisticating and really changing, that it's done in an ethical way. Um, so that, that was, you know, but that whole, the whole word agent, you know, it has, uh, it, you know, you get like the entourage, <laughs> you know, television right. show that like- Well, people have, a trouble, have problems with the idea that yoga is an industry. Yes. Some people really just, you know, can't abide that. And I, I got to tell you, I've been doing this a long time. It was not an industry when I got involved. <laughs> there was no money. You know, I, I literally, I used to teach classes here in New York at the Paris Health Club on the Upper West Side. I get paid $4 a class. And the main attraction wasn't the $4, it was that I got to use the hot tub. <laughs> you know, I got, I, I thought I was getting a great deal. How much has changed in the salary? I, yeah, <laughs> right. Inflation adjusted, it's probably pretty much the same in a lot, yeah, right. So, um, yeah, there was, people did it because they loved it. People taught because they loved it, and it wasn't about the money. That said, it's nice to get paid what you're worth. Yeah, well, one of, one of my favorite quotes is, um, you know, if it's not making you a living, then it's a hobby, not a career. And that's just a really big distinction for a lot of people to really think about, like, is your yoga is it a hobby? Can you have another job? Is that something that's important to you? But if you really want to dedicate, if you want to be a full-time whatever it is that you do, I sure hope it pays the rent, you know? Me too. I mean, because, you know, I tell people, and this is true, I am unemployable in any other field. <laughs> this is the only job I've ever had, honestly. You know, I used to have part-time things where I do to pay the rent, but as terms of career and, you know, it, it, this is it. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if, if I can't make my living doing this, I'm, I'm flipping burgers somewhere. Yeah. And I'd be a terrible employee doing that. Veggie burgers. Yeah. Really? No. Have you met me? Yeah, I was okay. a joke. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I am unemployable in any other field, and that's just the truth of me. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I want people to understand about how this whole thing got started is, is the real why behind the business. And, you know, what I realized um, while spending time in the yoga industry, hanging out with teachers and really getting to know teachers outside of the studio and really finding out what's going on is that it's really hard to make a living teaching yoga. It is. And um, that most teachers are struggling to make ends meet. You know, I had, I was shocked to find that a lot of teachers um, don't have health insurance or are struggling to pay their rent on time and, and realities like that. And because yeah. you were always like employed by a business and they oh, had totally. a health Big plan and yeah. full benefits, you know, the whole thing. That's what a job is, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> what are you laughing at? That's what jobs are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it was pretty, I don't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> but where she comes from, where she came from her perspective, that's the job. Mm -hmm. right? You pay your rent, you get your health care covered. And that means that's what it means to be employed. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of these uh, same conversations I was hearing, you know, if, if I can't figure out how to make this work, I'm going to have to go back to my day job. I'm going to have to do this. And these are, you know, gifted, gifted people who are sharing these gifts that, you know, had so profoundly changed my life. And so I'm like, okay, this isn't, something's going to give at some point. If you are passionate about something and this work is changing the world, but you can't survive, eventually you will stop doing it. And then what happens? You know, and where we live, you know, being in America, living in New York City, you've got to make your ends meet. You know, there's no option. And um, 
So I decided I was going to do something about that problem. And what I chose to do was help out with the business side of being a yoga teacher. So that's where Yama came from. And, um, you know, if you had have asked me a couple of years ago whether or not I thought I was the Ari Gold of yoga, I would have said absolutely not. You know, uh, the New York Times, that's, that's what the Ari New York Gold, Times. who is based on a real yes, person. Yes, yes, a very successful one, but who had a per, you know, certain personality. And I, yeah. Oh, Leslie can comment on whether or not I'm that. But, um, you know, we were doing, we do everything. We do everything from scheduling, you know, and hand, like there's nothing, there's nothing, I fold props, you know what I mean, in the, in the classroom, like there's nothing that we don't do if it has to come, if it has to do with supporting a teacher so that they can really focus on doing what they do best. Um, now, fast forward, you know, a couple of years into this, while the industry is changing and we do have new opportunities that yoga teachers are seeing for the first time, you know, I did come from a meeting all day at a television network today, like that's a reality. We also book workshops and handle all of these other things and so it's sort of the full spectrum of what's out there for a yoga teacher. Um, but it's tough sometimes when people only see the, the flashy side of what they think that this really is. And, and let me tell you, we're making a, a cut of what the teachers are making and as you know, you know, the average salary for a yoga teacher is, you know, in New York City um, and this is a pretty good established teacher, it's $35,000 a year. So it's, it's a labor of love and thank God we get to hang out with amazing amazing people hmm. and do this work. I mean, it's a passion project. Like, I started this because the practice needs to get out there in a bigger way, and helping the teachers is my way to serve. Yeah. So. Well, the thing I want to point out also is that, um, you know, if you, he you hear something about Ava negotiating with the TV network, I'm assuming this is Sadie's deal that you're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, um, there's a lot of in integrity behind what people like Ava and Sadie are doing. You know, um, Sadie basically built her own her own career mm -hmm. out of who she is. Mm -hmm. You know, she was the chick in front of the tripod, doing the videos and putting them on YouTube and getting like thousands and thousands of views on YouTube. You know, she she had something to share. She put it out there, and people connected with it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. The, the, the market will determine the, the value of, of what someone's doing pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can only sell them a bill of goods for so long. You know, I think if recent events in the yoga world have proved nothing other than that, uh, you know, it's true. Um, and in the long run, uh, success is not necessarily how many people are worshiping at your feet or how many centers you have or how many people you've certified or anything like that. It's um, how well you can stick to your own truth and your own standards and coming from that place attract the right people, not necessarily the most people, but the right people into what you're doing. And the fact that Sadie is a person like that and she's been able to do that and has the opportunity to put herself on this cable network mm -hmm. with a show mm -hmm. That she hasn't sold out in order to get. That's Absolutely. the important thing. It's, it's a huge it's, misconception. You, you guys recruited the network people into your point of view. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, because of the industries that we we parallel, you know, entertainment and music, people often think that we must pluck someone and kind of put a put an image on them, give you a voice, give you a message. When we actually do entirely the opposite, and it's you, such you a do airbrush their photos, don't you? When Not you put them on the website. <laughs> she was accused of photoshopping some people. <laughs> who are these people who are accusing? They are they are, mostly they're anonymous, yeah. so we don't know who they are. Yeah, it's out there. There's I mean, even since day one, you know, people were always Yeah. See that's the thing. With it. I want to say this to anyone out there that's an anonymous blogger. You know, <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean, no, really. People like Ava, people like me, people like Sadie, people like all of you, we put ourselves out there with our name on it, okay? And we are easily identifiable and recognizable targets for any kind of shit that people want to throw at us. And if you're throwing it in your own name, that's fine, okay? We can deal with that. We have no problem, you know, responding uh, from a place of integrity to any kind of criticism anyone, anyone wants to throw at us. But it's the anonymous motherfuckers out there who don't want to be known, who from the safety of that anonymity feel that they are entitled to say anything they want to about other people, that is just flat out cowardly bullshit. 
okay? And it doesn't, it doesn't warrant a response. I have a strong policy about not responding to anonymous crap on the internet. And that will always be the case. And, and the bloggers out there that have integrity, like our friend Whalen, actually has managed to clarify his policy on that. He will not accept anonymous posts mm -hmm. anymore. So that's a good thing. Whalen is Elephant Journal, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So people who have some integrity understand what this anonymous stuff is about and don't want to have anything to do with it. And that's a good thing. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> keeping it real and keeping the keeping integrity in the game. Keeping the integrity in the game, you know, one of the most rewarding parts of what we do is, is cl clarifying, helping someone really get clear on what they're already saying. We don't manufacture anything. We just kind of chip away and clean it up and say, you know what, don't worry about what else is going on. Like if you keep speaking and you keep saying what's authentic to you and yeah. doing your work, you will attract the people that you need to attract. You know, none of the work that we do looks the same for any of the teachers that we work with because everyone's different, everyone's message is different, their strengths are different, their niche is different, the climate is different that they're in, their goals yeah. are different, you know? And it's what we uh, do in yoga. We adapt what we're doing to the individual. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if it's yoga, that's what you have to do to make it work. Yeah, cool. and like you're saying, you know, if someone's got a message that becomes popular, then that's going to happen anyways. You know, you can't... But you can't tailor the message to what you think is going to be popular. Correct. It just, it doesn't work. It doesn't it work. It just doesn't work. Or if it works, it only work for so long and then you'll be in really deep doo-doo mm -hmm. when it all comes crashing down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Indeed. Cool. Well, I'm so glad we got a chance to do Thank this. Thank you. <laughs> Big hug. <laughs> all right. All right. And, and Nardini, you got to show up at some point, okay? You can't keep hiding. You're going to be here on camera with us sometime. Well, I got to talk to her agent, I guess, to get her to show right. up. That's right. I know where, where she is at all times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we got that down. <laughs> especially Chelsea the bleeps. especially the <laughs> f you. No, she doesn't she bleep, bleep me. You? She doesn't bleep me. She doesn't bleep me. <laughs>